Hey folks, so today I want to talk about a really good question that I see asked often in statistics, which is what is the difference between x bar and mu? Um, I've seen x bar called the sample mean, I've seen it called an estimator or a statistic, you may have seen maximum likelihood estimator, whereas mu is often called the population mean or a parameter. Um, but x bar and mu are not the same thing, they are however intimately related, so today I just want to give you an intuition sort of of what we're doing when we're calculating x bar. So let's say you want to know the average height of people in a population and you've collected some data points. And for the sake of today, you were just going to do three. Normally you can do much more, but for the sake of the question, let's say x1 equals 160 centimeters. I'm here in Canada, so we're using metric. x2 is 170 centimeters and x3 is 180 centimeters. Now, if I were to just ask you intuitively, you know, what's the average here, you'd probably do what you were taught to do in school, you know, in first or second grade and do, well, x1 plus x2 plus x3 over the number of things that we have is, you know, 160 plus 170 plus 180 over 3 gives us an average of 170. And you might say just intuitively that this is a decent guess for, you know, the average of the whole population. And you, you, that's basically all you're doing here. You're saying that this number here, x bar, is the sum of, this is just, you know, the common sense definition of the average, all of your different xi's for i going from 1 to n, right, all of your xi's divided by n, the number of items that you have. And you are saying that x bar is a decent guess from you, for the population. Because you can't measure the whole population, but you know you still need to collect some data and make some decisions. You know maybe you're opening a suit shop and you have to decide how tall to make your suits, or you're building subway doors and you have to decide how big to make the doors. Like you, you need to be able to work with the uncertainty around never being able to know mu, but still being able to collect data and do something with it. So to make this a little more rigorous, what exactly is meant by parameter here, like what is mu a parameter for? And when we say that x bar is a maximum likelihood estimator, like maximum likelihood of what exactly? So I'm going to clear this out. And I'm going to draw out a number line here. And let's say that we've observed our three data points, right? It was x1 was 160, x2 is 170, x3 is 180. So these are the three data points that we've observed. And the question that I now want to ask is, what is the actual mean of this population? For this question, we're going to make a simplifying assumption, which is that the population height is normally distributed. Um, if something is not normally distributed, there's actually something called the central limit theorem that you can use to work with it, but that's beyond the scope of the video. Today, we're just going to keep it simple and say that population mean is normally distributed with some mu as its mean and some variance sigma squared. So my question to you is, if you had to draw a normal distribution on this graph that you think would be a reasonable representation of the whole population based on these data points that you've seen, where would you draw it, right? And intuitively you might choose to put it here, something like this. Um, intuitively you, you probably wouldn't put it all the way out here if the data points that you observed were over here. Now, why is that exactly? Well, what is the popul oh, sorry, what is the probability of observing all these data points, right? Like what is the probability that x1 equals 160 and x2 equals 170 and x3 equals 180? Well, assuming that these are independent events and they're all identically distributed, which just means that like the height of one person doesn't affect the height of another person, and all of these heights individually are normally distributed, I mean, you can argue about whether or not this is the case, but for the purpose of this question, we'll assume that is the case, then it's just going to be the probability of all the individual events occurring. So it's going to be the probability of x equals 160 times the probability of x equals 170, times the probability of x equals 180. All right, so what does that actually look like on these charts? Like all these little bell curves, they represent the probability of any one data point being the case, right? So if this is our true mean here, if this is our true mu, 
then the probability that someone that we see someone who's 160 centimeters tall is going to be this value here, whatever that is. Uh, the probability that they're 170 centimeters tall is going to be this value here, whatever that is, and 180 be this value here, whatever that is, right? So whatever these numbers are, I'm just going to call this like P1, P2, P3. It's just going to equal P1 times P2 times P3. Cool. Whereas if we assume that this mu here is the truth, if this is the true mean, and we got our three data points over here, then what would the probability be? Well, keep in mind that this, this distribution doesn't just end here, right? It actually keeps going out sort of into infinity. It's always a little bit above zero, and the area under this whole thing is going to sum up to one by definition of it being a probability distribution, but this kind of keeps going on forever. So the probabilities in this case are going to be, well, it's going to be super low here, super low here, and super low here. And I'm going to call these Q1, Q2, and Q3. So if, on the other hand, mu2 is the true population mean, then the probability of us having seen these three data points is now going to be Q1 times Q2 times Q3. And you can just sort of intuitively see here that these probabilities here are very low. So this is going to give us something very small. Whereas if we assume that this is the true population mean, the number that we get here, well, it's going to be definitely much larger in comparison to the number that we get here. So when we collect a bunch of data and then we try to estimate mu, essentially what we're doing is saying, Given the data that we've seen, let's try to put, you know, a yellow normal distribution here such that the probability of having gotten our data points is maximized. So in this case, it's really clear that this bell curve here on the left is a better choice than this bell curve here on the right because it results in us having much higher probabilities. Um, but in reality, you're not just comparing two different bell curves, you're looking at all of the possible different bell curves that can be here. So there's, you know, an infinite number of them spanning this whole space, and you have to decide which one is the best. Um, but intuitively, that's what a maximum likelihood estimator is. It's how do we calculate a guess for mu, right? X bar is a guess for mu, and how do we calculate a guess for mu such that the probability of having seen our data points here, 160, 170, 180, is as high as possible. So that's the common sense intuition behind what a maximum likelihood estimator is. And in the next video, we'll go into an actual formal proof um, to, to prove to you that this form x bar equals the sum of all the different xi's divided by n is actually the maximum likelihood estimator for mu. So I will see you in the next video.